<laughs> no comment. Okay, so I want to show you this graph quickly. And uh, I want to talk to you for a moment about this relationship. Bye-bye, Ruth. This relationship between carbon dioxide and temperature, okay? So the graph that you see now describes a time period from the present over here at zero, going back just beyond 400,000 years ago. And this is a measure of the amount of carbon dioxide in purple in the atmosphere and the air temperature in blue. So the first thing that you should notice is that there seems to be a relationship between these two things. So you'll notice the purple line, carbon dioxide, as carbon dioxide goes down in a general sense from about 450,000 years ago to roughly 350,000 years ago, as the concentration of carbon dioxide goes down, temperature follows. It's a little behind, but eventually temperature also goes down. And this is measured, and this, this, this is an important piece, by the way. This is measured in parts per million. So if you could imagine grabbing a million parts of atmosphere, okay? Just grab a million parts of, of the atmosphere, 300 or 300, and in this particular graph, 300 is the top, up to 300 of those parts would be made up of carbon dioxide. So it's a measure of concentration, how much carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere out of a million parts of atmosphere. This particular graph ranges from about 190 parts per million to about 300. The important piece here is the fact that there's a relationship as carbon dioxide about 350,000 years ago rose, then the blue line temperature you see follows. And you'll notice these lines kind of mirror each other, not perfectly, but enough to, to conclude that there's a relationship between the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and the temperature of the atmosphere. And so we know this um, to be true based on information like this and a couple of other pieces of information that help understand this. First of all, we have only measured carbon dioxide directly in the atmosphere for about 50 years. So somewhere around 50 years ago, climatologists started to take direct measurements of how much carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere. However, scientists realized that they could um, measure carbon dioxide in other ways going further back in history. And as it turns out, if you go to Antarctica, where the ice is very thick, you can take a core sample, okay? You can bore down with a hollow tube into the ice in Antarctica, and you can extract a core of ice. And much like a tree ring, um, a tree lays down a new ring every year. Every year in Antarctica, there's a new fresh layer of ice. And so with a microscope, you can count those layers. And as you count backwards from the surface, you're essentially going back in time, okay? And as it turns out, when that ice layer is laid down, there are tiny little bubbles that are captured within the ice. And those bubbles contain the atmosphere um, at the time that the ice was laid down. And so what scientists do is they extract one of these ice cores and then they examine the contents of the air within those air bubbles. And based on the content of that air, um, they can determine the temperature, a rough temperature going back for over 400,000 years and also what the content of carbon dioxide is. And so when we talk about this idea of global warming, 
We're talking really about the last 150 years since Industrial Revolution. And we're talking about an, a time when humans have increased the concentration of carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is a gas. And we mentioned the other day that most of the um, gases in our atmosphere are invisible to solar radiation. So the sun's rays pass right through our atmosphere. They strike the earth and they heat the earth up. Now, some of solar radiation is reflected from clouds. Some of the solar radiation is reflected from glaciers. There are surfaces on the planet, um, water, uh, even concrete that can reflect radiation. But some of the radiation is absorbed by the planet. The planet heats up and it readmits radiation, heat, which it just so happens carbon dioxide is really good at absorbing. So this carbon dioxide level is one of the reasons that we feel a warm atmosphere when we go outside, okay? The carbon dioxide uh, molecules, that compound absorbs the radiation coming from the planet and it heats up, we feel that as heat. So if you add more, then the idea is the planet warms, the atmosphere warms, okay? And as humans, we have done a pretty good job of increasing the concentration of carbon dioxide um, through the burning of fossil fuels. Every time you burn coal, oil, or natural gas, that combustion reaction releases carbon dioxide. Also in our agricultural practices, in some of our land development practices, um, refrigeration uh, can release carb or, uh, global warming gases, um, even making roads. The process of, of making concrete from limestone releases uh, carbon dioxide. There's also the burning of uh, the rainforest and other forests. So human caused increase in carbon dioxide is what scientists attribute to the current warming trend that we see. Now, what makes um, scientists nervous? This is, this is a big one, everyone. I want you just to pause what you're doing and pay attention to this. This is what makes scientists really nervous. There's a lag. So notice how carbon dioxide goes down and temperature isn't immediate, but eventually the temperature also falls. Carbon dioxide levels go up, eventually temperature goes up as well. So the first piece of this is the rise or the fall in the amount of carbon dioxide. When you look at this graph, the highest number, somewhere around 325,000 years ago, that carbon dioxide ever made it to was about 300 parts per million. So now if we fast forward to modern day, um, this graph is not complete. Notice how it just kind of stops there. So in the year 2020, what is the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere? Anybody? Well, you can just think about that for a second. If we were to draw a line, the line would end somewhere up here. In the year 2020, carbon dioxide in our atmosphere is just over 400 parts per million. We have not seen that um, in the last 400 plus thousand years. So what makes scientists nervous is, where's that temperature gonna go now that we have well over 400 parts per million of carbon dioxide and we're continuing to add more. So. When we talk about the earth warming and that warming in the last 150 years being caused by humans, this is really the graph that we go to that explains the relationship between um, humans adding carbon dioxide and the temperature going up. Okay, so this is an important graph and we will come back to that. I'm going to...